before we get into this, I'm about to hit start on this. Anything mm-hmm. you don't want to talk about? No, nah, man. Let's get it. Everything is on the table. Yep. All right. All right, welcome everybody to the Rodriguez Project here at Mastermind Media. Yes. The man, the myth, the legend is in the house today. He just uh-huh. drove all the way from Detroit, Michigan. All the way. By himself. Yep. In a, what were you driving? I was driving a Equinox. An Equinox. Yep. All the way from Michigan. Paris Jones, everybody, is in the building, as he would say. What's going on, man? How you feeling? Feeling good. Just happy to be here. I know. <laughs> Listen, every single day, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Blessed to see another day. Literally. I wake up all the time, like, super early. Yeah. Like, just, sometimes it's just, it's not even programmed. I mean, you know, not setting an alarm or anything. Just waking up, like, oh, what's going on? Like, I get into, yeah, like, that yeah. mode of, like, whoa. All right? Because sometimes, like, literally, I feel like it was all, like, a dream mm-hmm. at times. Like, yo, is this real? Did yeah. this really happen to me? And, uh, you know, it just, I don't know. I just wake up super early and then get that day going. Yeah. And, and, and for people that don't know what you're, what you're talking about, you were, I mean, you were like this, you've been like this for a long time. Oh um, yeah. As far as positive. talking about yeah. p- positive energy, talking about you, you only get one life. Like yeah. literally about a decade ago, I have a, I have a video from, um, <laughs> you and JJ, JJ was such a young one and you just literally, it was the, it was right at, around new year's, right? Yeah, it was new year's. We was, came out here, mm-hmm. brought JJ out. Um, you know, JJ's 19 now, be, he'll be 20 this month. But yeah, that was. Wait, so he was nine. He's about around nine. He was nine. No, no, way. no, no. Wait, no. He had to be wait, a little no, no, older. No, no, no. no he was. Because that was 2016. Six, that was. T- that was 2016. 2016. Okay, yeah. 2016. Yeah. So it was right before was, I moved out of that spot. Right. 2015. No, no, we were in that spot. Though. I know, but it was yeah. right before. It was right before I moved out. So 2016. So four, seven years. He's 19. So he's about 12. Yes. He was about 11, 12 at that time. Yeah, and he's, he's just chilling him. next to you. And what a great experience for him to get that. He, he's just get, he's been just getting that life from the beginning, huh? Oh, from early ages. Just but he, but but at that point, so I, I I remember that might be the earliest I remember you talking about um, that kind of stuff. But you also all of your passwords. I don't want to give your password away right. because they're are they still the same? A lot of them. Yeah, some of them, but they got a yeah, number yeah, on yeah. them, so you're yeah. not gonna really know. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was something. It wasn't exactly like this, but it's like. You're here one you're time here one type time. of thing. Yeah, you're here yeah. one time. That that's like, so I think it's really smart that you even. I don't know if you intentionally did that within your passwords, but the fact that you even every time you have to put your password in is like you're yeah. here one oh, time. Oh, oh type yeah, of that thing. was the reason yeah. definitely because it just it's just that reminder because everybody thinks you're gonna probably be here forever. Yeah, you know, um, and I think once you say those words or you see them and you got to type it in every day. It gives you that little boost of like, yeah. man, I'm here once. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you, even if you <laughs> like, potentially like, even if you potentially get used to that or like, Hey, what's the password? I know it's like mm-hmm. you're here one time or whatever, but like, what's the number? Like, you know, even going back and forth back in the day, it's like, even if you aren't registering it as you're putting it somewhere, like even subconsciously you're it's register registering with you. Yes, it just keep it just stays on you. Just that reminder. Mm-hmm. And so you, even as a kid, were you always like that, or when do you think? You like, know, as a kid, I you know I'm not going to say that I was like that. I was always just anxious and thinking about like, you know, time. I did have mm-hmm. a thing about time of like, I got to do it now, or I don't know if I'm going to get that opportunity to yeah. do it. Yeah, you know when I would have those moments was the first time I remember it. <laughs> I did it. I did a demo, uh, a music demo. I, I really love the 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 lyrics I wrote, but the the album it was called Ready. I wasn't ready, uh, <laughs> but, but I really like it. Was ready written, if you wrote yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a nice. It was I was ready to get this out there. But I remember um, Laura Aguallo and I were like editing the um, the fo- Photoshop in the cover and the lyric like the as you you know the what did you call that like the insert in the CD or whatever had all the lyrics and photos of me and stuff and I'm like oh my god I'm almost done with this but what if something happens to me right now I'll never get to experience right. it coming out and and so I would 
have those moments. So I'm unlike unlike you. Um, I'm not saying that I'm like completely oblivious to it, but it would be certain moments when I was doing something like I felt was monumental in my life. That's when I would have those moments. But but for you, it's it's been something like a message that you've been yeah. preaching for a long time. Definitely, and it um like as I got older, even more. You know, just taking chances. You're here once. You don't know if you're going to get out of the opportunity. We all do that. It's just like if it's the little things that we do. Like if somebody sends you a message and says, hey, do you want to meet <laughs> Monday or Thursday? I usually try. I take that Monday. Yeah. yeah. Because you <laughs> just don't know if that. Because if wow. you say Thursday, something could happen in between those it's days. It's less likely you'll be here on Thursday than Monday. 100%. But not even on that note for sure. But them, their their schedule, right, something right. can happen. Right. Or, okay. Got you. So it's on, not on a Tuesday. You know, you, if you say like, if you say, yeah, let's meet on Wednesday. Oh, they got to reschedule. Something mm-hmm. happened. We got to go to next week, and then it gets dragged out to the next week, and then two weeks, and then it doesn't happen. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't happen. So I'm always snatching up that Monday, the even if I'm one. not See? prepared as much I'm, as mm. I need to be. I need to grab that. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, because even if the Monday eventually, if it ends up getting canceled, the Thursday is still available. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> here's here's what: um, if somebody gives me a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday, I usually go for Tuesday. You know why? No, <laughs> because it's early enough because I want to make sure it happens. Right. Yeah. But it also makes me feel more busy if I can not available Monday to do it. Right. So I got what you're subconsciously, subconsciously or like, yeah, yeah. They, they might be, like, you know, not even subconsciously. They might even be like, oh, wow. Like, you know, yeah, it's, this person. This yeah. Is, yeah, I can't play. I just, I'm just straight <laughs> up like, wow. nope. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Like, let's go. Like, oh, can you meet? And then the first times I'm grabbing that first slot too. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. Even if they told me the first three, I'm oh, I'm like, okay, let's get that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, between 10 and one or up 10 I o'clock. love that reasoning though. That makes, that makes a lot more sense. Just because than it five, just. You know? We don't know. Mm-hmm. And we all play around as human beings. Like, yeah, we're going to get another opportunity. Other religions, some people think they're coming back, you know, <laughs> another yeah. time. So they may uh, just be a little bit more chilled mm-hmm. to get stuff done because they think they're coming back in another life. Yeah. If you really think about it, just like, just for a few moments, like a minute, just just dive in and just, man, I only got this one time? I got to get it in, man. Yeah. And it makes sense because the first time you visited me for a month over on yeah. Magnolia Boulevard, oh, yeah. I watched you do more in 30 days. Were you here right. for 30 days about? Yeah, about like, yeah, 26 days. Almost, yeah. yeah. You did more in 26 days than I've seen some people do in 26 years. Yeah. You know, because, and it was that time because of, and it shows because if you move out here, because LA is the place, New York is the place. If you move, it's kind of like, all right, I can do it the next day. I can do it this day. I had the 26th day. I had to maneuver. I could have got caught up in the, "Ah, let me just chill. and I'll do it that next day. But it was like just gung-ho and just going to, you know, the the agents and dropping off my head. The acting workshops, the acting studios, just dropping the headshot off. Just doing that, you know. It was a great experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, and that, that that lit a fire under me because I'm like, because I was someone that wa- that moved here right after I turned 20 years old, and was a go getter. But that was like a different right. And you did a lot. You were doing that. a lot though. You know, you had. I mean, you were doing the podcast stuff really early mm-hmm. with the um, what was the After Buzz TV After Buzz. You was yeah, doing yeah. that. You was doing the modeling hosting so you had yourself in the entertainment round but yeah I was def- I was definitely trying to find yeah you. staying busy and staying seeing busy. what I love what I love most because coming from Michigan I was always very uh I, I always thought people would judge me for doing the arts I didn't want my friends to know that I was at home thinking I was a I was like writing songs about girls but I didn't want them to think I thought I was good at it for some reason, it was some right. kind of like thing. I was yeah. like, "Oh, I'm, we play sports. That's all we do." But I was at home. I was like trying to get creative. Pastor Martin at the at the um, at the church, the church was teaching me how to how to play guitar, and I was. But I didn't want people to think I thought I was good at it. So what? So mm. and then once I moved here, then every it, it felt like the arts were way more accepted. And then I was like, "Oh wait, I can do anything," and I wasn't afraid to say it then. And then when I did that, then I realized that I was 
I thought my friends were, would put a judgment on me, but they wouldn't have. They right. loved. They were so supportive they, when I came course. back and played and stuff like 100%. that. One hundred percent. But you, so from you, like going like uh, performing arts school and stuff like that. Uh, what age did you start doing that kind of stuff? So I went. It was in middle school. Is when you really just started jumping in because we had to. I went to IS forty four. Um, it was crazy. Jordan Pill went there too. Oh wow! He went there the same year I was there, which is crazy. In Never New York, right? That. Yep, in New York. And uh, we had to do all of the electives. When you get in there, sixth grade, you have to do singing, art, dance, and acting. And then when you're in the seventh grade, you have to pick which one you want to do Ooh. from seventh to eighth grade until you graduate. So, I mean, of course, I picked drama. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there on, that was it. And then we had to audition to get into your high school. That you wanted to go to. They didn't care about, not saying they didn't care about the academics, but you got in by your audition. You could have been a straight A student, all your grades good, but if your acting wasn't up to par, you wasn't getting accepted. Do you remember what your audition was? Uh, I did. Was it a play? I don't know if it was uh, from Antigone, but I know me and Calixto wrote a monologue for me. It was for a, a short film that we was doing called Devious Decisions. <laughs> And I was playing a drug dealer. And I did a drug dealer, and then I did a, from Creon, I mean, what is this, what was it, yeah, Antigone. The character was, uh, you know, um, his name was Creon. And it was uh, kind of like a Shakespeare kind of thing, because I wanted to show range from doing the Shakespeare than doing this drug dealer from the hood. So, yeah, yeah. you know, and it worked. Um, I wind up going to, you know, audition for LaGuardia, wasn't prepared. LaGuardia was the school that everybody wanted to get into. That was like the number one, like, and then second was Talent Unlimited. And, uh, you know, I wound up getting in there. Calixto got in that one too, or which one? No, Calixto wasn't in, um, he didn't go to, he didn't go to perform. Oh, he didn't, school. he was just, he just helped you with yours. He's helped me with oh, my, so. um, yeah, my Liberating audition. Yeah, yep. yeah. But LaGuardia was so, it was like that super intimidating one, not being prepared, just wasn't prepared. And that just whipped me into shape. Was it because you took prepared? The, it was it took was it because you took the earlier slot? <laughs> Probably <laughs> <laughs> because I just wasn't prepared. And it was like, man, but everybody went there. Like LaGuardia mm -hmm. was that fame school. That's what it is, fame yeah. school. But after that, I said, nope, I'm taking everything fully serious. Yeah. So it was a it was actually oh, a great it was lesson. A great lesson. Yeah. Great lesson. And then wind up auditioning for a Talent Unlimited, um, which was a program in another school at first, and then it turned into a high school, just like the whole program. Oh, wow. Build it out to a high school. So that was, uh, it was amazing. Just an amazing, because what they did, what a lot of the performing arts schools did was you couldn't perform until your senior year because they were trying to make you into like yeah. a star. So you're in ninth grade, you're doing like small performances for your class, but you wasn't able to perform until you know, your senior year. Oh, wow. And they would do auditions for, um, well, LaGuardia was way more strict. They were kind of like that as well because they were doing like Broadway, Broadway showcase type stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people, you know, with LaGuardia too, though, a lot of people were kind of like, oh, I don't really, they wanted to go, but some people wanted to perform right away. I was kind of like that too, but like I said, just didn't get in anyway. Mm -hmm. But, with that, going to Town Unlimited, they kind of had the same rules, but you can audition for um, certain plays that they had. Yeah. And if you were good, good, they would let you get into it. That makes, yeah, that makes sense. So that was dope. It seems like there's a lot of, um, there's that same thing out here within, uh, with acting schools or acting classes and stuff like that. There's like certain acting classes that say like, hey, you know, even if you're in scene study one or whatever, like maybe you shouldn't act, in, you shouldn't audition into a certain time or something like that and i think partially you know some schools i think it makes sense or if you're just starting out you know even mm -hmm. in like technique or whatever classes you get to a certain point but then you know I, I could also see how some schools might do that just to get people to continue taking their classes until they tell you that you're you're ready right. for it but i mean you know you audition you want to go out there and put your best foot forward and and uh you know getting those notes of being too green or something like that could set you back a little yeah, bit i mean that was like it was crazy because like i said going into the going into high school Right, at, you know, you're around all of these talented kids. I mean, for dance, for 
or it was acting. It was. Was there anybody that was already famous in those schools? Not like child we were, actors and stuff. No, I mean, but a lot of people were working. There were people working, but then after, you know, once we graduated is when everybody started to like just take off doing TV shows, commercials, um, really just coasting. Because I went to two high schools. I switched from Town Unlimited. Um, it was in 11th grade, and I went to um, public school repertory company where it was a school where it was straight up just mostly the arts. It was like we did like six months of no academics, and it was straight up like, wow, you know, performing arts. Was it just like being excited to go to school every day based on oh, what yeah. you're doing? Oh, yeah. It was super exciting. Crazy. Just a whole different thing. And it worked, you know. Um, and it was more of our alternative high school mm -hmm. as well. So it worked. You know, the respect level. You called the teachers by their first names. You didn't say Mr. Johnson or whatever, though. It was like, hey, Derek, what's up? Like, Yo, Gail. Gail. What's up, Gail? <laughs> but it was like, because they wanted you to be on the respect yeah. level with them. Yeah, yeah. Because that little stuff works, you know, when you're giving that person the respect and calling them with the first name and not Mr. Because you kind of just feel like, you know, and I get it for certain things, you know. Yeah, there's that but, switch. I remember even like some of our, um, I saw on Facebook the other day, somebody said, um, I wish my mother a happy birthday. And somebody said, happy, happy birthday, Mrs. Rodriguez. One of my childhood friends, right, 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 because right, like, right, they'll right, always right. be that or yeah, Miss Lisa. Yeah, yeah, like no, that. and that's yeah. for some things that's great, yeah, you know. But they were always, you know, just bringing up and the younger ver younger kids, and you know, you want them to still feel like you're at they're at they're not uh, they're not below you, yeah. But then there's their respect of like you know, hey, you know, Mister and stuff like that. It's tricky. Mm -hmm. That's a tricky one. That's yeah. tricky. But since we were young adults they wanted to do this just like when i'm doing an event and i have like kids when you call them kids they kind of feel like huh you say i need my young adults to come up hmm. they're like oh they feel yeah 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 young adults instead of like the kids like elementary ones is different like the little ones but if you're junior high school you want to call them young adults yeah it's a different vibe they want to be yeah 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 so so having those um, you know, that experience in high school and di two different high schools. And then you got this opportunity to move to Michigan. Um, yeah, and, and, and that, oh, go ahead. But before that, I mean, I got uh, into um, the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute. Right. That was right before I came to Michigan. A friend of mine, you know, uh, Christina, she's like my sister, great friend. Um, she told me that the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute is doing, um, it was like a scholarship program mm. and it was more for like the inner city, the inner city, like kids and stuff like that. So I didn't know what Lee Strasberg was. I didn't know about it. Did a little research, but I still didn't know about that. But I knew like, Oh, Al Pacino and Marlon Brando, um, you know, a lot of the greats. So I went and auditioned. I kind of used the same pieces that I used, you know, from doing the high yeah, school audition. You're comfortable with. I was comfortable with. And uh, it was great. Wound up getting a, a scholarship there. And uh, that was game changing, literally. That's like what I felt like I was doing beforehand was just terrible compared to when I got in there. And, um, and, the, was, and the goal at that point was like, I want to do, I'm, a, yeah. I'm an actor. Oh, full throttle. Yeah, full throttle. No and we did take a direct and film and television class. That was great. Because I wanted to learn behind the scenes as well. And then that's the reason why I got to Michigan, which is crazy because the, my scene partner, who I met um, in class, was actually living in Michigan. And how did he, D. Brown? Yep. How did D. he Brown. audition for it? How did he even? So, hear no, that? no, he paid. It was, you can pay to go to the oh, school too. Okay. Um, but they had just a little program that they wanted to get, you know. They wanted to do this for the kids in the like in the inner city, yeah. Because they knew like the 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 tuition was ridiculous for it though. So um, there was a lot of kids from um, like internationally, like oh you know overseas coming in. That was it's really a, a ton. Yeah. But um, I don't know. He found the school, and I guess he he came and he was paying the tuition. Yeah, because he was already doing well here yeah. yep. or in Michigan. Yep. In Michigan. So met him. 
in class because we were they you know first day, you know first day looking for scene partners, and then we just connected as scene partners, and then from there it was just like crazy. He told me about what he was doing out there in Michigan, mm-hmm. which I knew nothing about, which was uh, bar and bar mitzvahs. You know, he was doing, you know, of course, weddings, bar and bar mitzvahs, but the bar and bar mitzvahs was the bigger bulk of the yeah, business. Yeah, MC and... Yeah, and was just telling me, like, man, you got a good personality, man. I think you should come out and check it out. And I'm just like, no, I'm good, man. What are you talking about? He showed me a video. I'm like, I'm not doing that cheesy business. This is what he was showing me. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And then he showed me one of his pay stubs. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Money talks." I said, uh, "I think it's time." Wow! But you know, he when he brought me, he said, "Just come out, check it out," and it still did. The, it was still a form of entertainment. Mm-hmm. I was nineteen. You know, I was like I said, I was really at the you know cusp of really going out there to make some stuff happen. And then, and like what year it, was this then? Nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. This is right after high school. And then he was just like, hey, man, like, you should, uh, you know, come out, check it out. So I came and checked it out, and I was just, like, blown away from just the energy, you know, entertaining. And it's still an art form of, like, doing stuff. So I just felt like, okay, this is an opportunity for me to see something different, come out here, but I can still do what he's kind of doing, me living in New York, and then just coming out on the weekends doing parties and that's what you did for a while so i started doing that for a while and then i became pretty popular in the community so it was like and i really was like you know this is a good opportunity and once i became popular and everything else instead of just going back and forth i wound up just staying in michigan yeah what, what year was that 2000 2000 yeah but you were but you were in um new york for 9 11 weren't you oh yeah I was out there when I came back out, um, you know, just visiting and, you know, I was taking like spurts. I didn't officially like when I was out there, I was staying in hotels. In, in Michigan you were or yeah. in New York? No, in Michigan. Michigan. Okay. So you were like, still yeah, for staying long in hotels. Times, yeah. yeah. Um, staying with D, you know, I was living with him for a while. So didn't really lock anything down. Um, but when I came to, you know, to visit and... That was 9-11, which was crazy. Damn. I had a bar mitzvah on Saturday. 9-11 was on Tuesday. So wait, you had a bar mitzvah on Saturday yep. before 9-11? No. Or like the, the next, that the coming next Saturday? Saturday. The, the Saturday coming up. So 9-11 happened. How long were you in New York at that time for? Like, were you going back for like a week or two uh, weeks or a month? Man, I think I was out there for two weeks. And then I knew I had to get back on that Saturday. Then that 9-11 happened. They talking about nobody's leaving. Then by Friday, because they cut off the bridge, all of that stuff. They were like, nobody's flying. Nobody's driving across the bridge. We shutting it down. Mm -hmm. And I still remember to this day. I mean, it's crazy because the family does too. Like every time I would see them or talk to them, they remember that I made it my, because listen, nobody was thinking about going back out to just do a party based on that was going on. I was, everybody was freaking out. Yeah. But I made it a way to get back out there. I said, I got to do it. I met with the family. Their party's coming up. And I got to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Was it was it mainly because you wanted to you wanted to make it there and do that thing? Or was it like, based on what was happening in New York, you were like, you, you oh, were unsure. Uh, unsure was, because no, everybody was, was unsure. I need to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but on top of, mm-hmm. I committed to doing this event. Yeah. I didn't know if that event was still going to happen. But when I heard, because remember, it was in Michigan. So mm-hmm. it was like, you know, because remember, they had uh, people flying. Everything was cut off. Yeah. So the where were you, when it, where were you when, you, when it happened? When I was, was in my apartment. And we had a fashion show that day. We were, I was doing like some, uh, doing like promo events and stuff like that. And we had like a fashion show. And it was crazy. All that stuff was just shut down. In my apartment. How, how close to? It was about 60 blocks. 60 blocks. So yeah. like even like when that happens, everybody go outside and like look and stuff. Or yeah. Like, can you well, even you see could, that far? You couldn't or? see it from where I was at, mm-hmm. but you the smoke and stuff came. Wow. Like as hours went down, we saw that smoke was coming. You could smell Man. it. Yeah, it was crazy. 
Yeah, it's kind of like here when there's like a, a fire that could be far away. You kind of just but later something. though, but yeah, yeah, but later, like you know, it's gonna take a couple of hours. It took a a, a like <laughs> that happened like early in the morning. It was yeah. like six a.m. or I think something. I was in, yeah, well, it was uh, nuts. It was six with the World Trade Center. Yeah, I remember. I remember hearing about it. I think I was in in drama class when I heard about it. And I didn't even know what the World Trade Center was at that time. Right. I was in high school. I was like, oh, right, no way. And I was like, what? Like, wait, what? What is it? Like, what is it? Like, I had heard of it before, but I didn't, I wasn't able to fully grasp. And then you see all the videos that displayed over and over again. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Man. So, so at that, was that kind of somewhat of a deciding factor of when did you go back to New York after that? Was it a minute? <laughs> it was a minute. I go yeah. front. I mean, now that, now I that was like, freaking out. And and nobody was really traveling back to New York at that time. It was no, probably, it was no. like, yeah. It was crazy. It was nuts. Like people were like like getting out of there. Yeah. They were nervous. So, you know, from that point I just stayed in Michigan, like just fully and then just d- did thousands of bar and bar mitzvahs. Damn. You know, became really known in the community and you know. Yeah. And and one of the most unique things I think from like based on um, you know, what you were doing in New York and then positioning yourself properly, like how many people that you how many people's bar mitzvahs or bat mitzvahs that you've done that ended up in the television industry as agents producers oh, all that crazy. stuff it's a just, ton. yeah a ton man that and watch seeing that is just like unbelievable um and then able to you know possibly doing some stuff you know with them and just having conversations and yeah that's just, it's just a different play it's so crazy you know doing actually the biggest thing too that's great too but like i did the kids bar mitzvah and then now I'm doing their wedding. That's just my yeah. mind. <laughs> yeah, that's no, because some people could be done after doing, you do the kids bar mitzvah at 12 or 13, seven years later, they're 20 years old. You could be done and be like, I had a good run. Yeah. But like, it's crazy. <laughs> just doing their party and then doing their wedding. Wow. And then seeing them have kids. That's where it's nuts. Yeah. And able to still do the parties and events. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't even know about like the, like that specific niche. I had no idea about, uh, about that. But when I, when I, right when I, through my journey of moving to LA, I was like, okay, I'll be an actor. And I was just waiting tables and bartending and auditioning and doing some other creative things. Started doing some entrepreneurial things as far as like running music showcases or whatever. But, um, but when I decided I needed to like a massive change right in like 2015, 16, I was like, let me go back to Michigan for a couple months. Mm-hmm. And it was like, started doing some bar mitzvahs or even hooked up, hooked me up with like D Brown out here um, mm-hmm. to dance at some of those kind of parties. And it's just like, it's a very lucrative business yeah. and business model and uh, you know, just events as a whole. But um, there's so many people that are like Los Angeles Lakers, uh, dancers that also dance at bar mitzvahs and right. other events and stuff like that. Yeah, no, like just yeah the you, you can do certain things and you can meet a ton of people. It's it's crazy because, and it kept me going because I was feeling like, ooh, when I was seeing my my people on TV commercials, I was like, I got to get, I got to get back in this space fully mm-hmm. of doing films because that's what I felt like I was born to do. Yeah, you know, and then that's when I said, okay, I got to just do it. Like that, really it, put the work in. Yeah. And like, you know, because in Michigan, you know, and that was like 2008 is when I was like, all right, I'm doing good stuff with the bar mitzvah stuff, but people were reaching out saying, man, what are you doing out there, man? What's going on? Mm-hmm. I'm like, and I'm seeing everybody, and I'm just like, man, I'm doing good. I'm, you know, making some money, got a great name, you know. But then I said, okay, let me write some stories and and do that. Then I was just like, all right, let me push forward. And the film incentive in 2009 came heavy. Yeah. And all of the productions were coming to Michigan. And I did extra work for three years. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that chapter. Being a stand-in. Yeah. I was a stand-in. I was just, you know, a principal extra doing all of that. That's when I said, after doing all of that, when the film incentive crashed and left out of there. Mm-hmm. What year was that? That was 2000 and, ah, was it uh, 2010 or 11? Mm-hmm. When it was done. 
where it was just like, I think so. You yeah, know, something like that. Yeah. But it was like that. But then that's when I said, okay, I'm seeing how this behind the scenes work. And I said, now I, I got to start my own production company because literally being on the set doing it, that's why I just try to tell people, like, that's the best training, you know. You just go on set, learn that way, like, literally. You you know, the schools are good, too. They'll give you some good yeah. stuff. Go do extra work. I tell an actor, because you got some people now that be like, I'm not going to do that. And I'm like, okay. I'm talking about I did extra work for three years, straight up behind the scenes, on set for 12 hours. They don't use you but for, like, like two hours. But that experience, you can't get that anywhere else. Yeah. I tell people, that was the best experience. Ever. Yeah. Just to see how, yeah, just to see how it's all done and understand, like, people have different jobs. and Learning the AD roles, you know, learning, you know, what the gaffer is, you know, learning the different PAs and all of that stuff. Networking Second camera, too and networking. And I was networking with them, you know, even though they probably weren't paying no attention at that time. Like, who is this guy? I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> like, I was just trying to talk. I was talking to everybody. Just like. Oh man, we got an idea. I got an idea. This is an ad. And then as an actor, like, because it's funny that, you know, you all the extras are trying to get a line when you're there. You're like, yeah. oh, I might get a line. And even when they try to give you a line, that thing is just taken right away. You know what I mean? You got to get tap heart lead. And, you know, some of them, they don't want to pay that. They don't want to do that. But it was crazy because I remember we worked on one show, Detroit 187. That was the biggest one did like all 18 episodes and they needed a core group and we were the core group of extras like in the police station, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And they were like, you know, yeah. So, you know, everybody was just talking like, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this and hopefully I get to say this line. And then I, it's so funny when I heard one of the, the, uh, it was, I don't know if it was, it was the AD or the PAs or they were just like, yeah, these guys really think they're going to get a line. And I, when I heard that, I was just like, oh, man, like, you know, because they didn't want to probably burst somebody's bubble. But they yeah. just like, because we were all just antsy, just trying to do that. Yeah. But then got cool with one of the uh, producers and they were just saying, you know, uh, like ABC Network, you know, if you want to do that, you got to send your to the casting director. Just send your headshot to the casting director and then we'll, you know, let them know that you're working on the show as, you know, as one of the, you know, the extras. But if there does come a line, that's how it has to go. Yeah. OK. From that. And that was crazy. That was just, man, just the behind the scenes stuff. People just don't know. But yeah, so much knowledge that you could acquire based on hearing them say that. And other, oh, that otherwise, took me just, to yeah. another level like, whoa, that, OK, man. Because everybody has their little, you know, like the the group, and we're just anxious. Yeah. Did anybody anybody uh, end up getting a line? Um, I think yes. Yeah, there was two people that did, but they, you know, one they got cut. I remember I was doing a stand in, and I looked nothing like him, but I was a stand in for Danny Glover, <laughs> and literally because the main person couldn't come in, and they said, "Oh, we need somebody, Danny Glover," but I got to chill with them the whole time. Which was great, yeah. Like just hanging out with him, and then same thing with um, um, Michael Keegan, um, well, yeah, Keegan, um, from uh, Jordan Pill, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was crazy too. I was his stand in, and like we hung out, just chopped it up. We had a good, like, I mean, it was just a great, you know, conversation and stuff. You know, that was great too. Like people didn't understand like the value of, like I said, doing the extra work, but really learning from it though yeah just watching behind the scenes and just seeing and then those relationships you build yeah you know and what a great opportunity i think coming from new york and having um you know the high school experience with performing arts and all that kind of stuff and they come to detroit and then that and then you find out there's a tax incentive coming to michigan and then all everybody's Crazy, shooting in michigan man. it was like oh wait this is my shot to get back into yeah. it so that was a no-brainer for you that was amazing it was brilliant, man. It was just a crazy experience. Was and anybody else uh, around you acting at the time, or did you kind of meet your tribe when you started acting or started doing No, I started meeting work? the tribe, like, there. Like, you know, um, man, my boy Franco, my boy Charlie. Then we just connected, and we, we shot a short film, and then, you know, we had some other projects in the works, too, like we were just talking about. Um, but, yeah, 
a couple other, you know, guys too. But it was, man, and I started like a little acting group with some of the people from the, uh, you know, from the films that we did on the extra stuff. Yeah. And it was great, man. And then, you know, time went by, and then, of course, you start that family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it gets crazy. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Wow. So when when was this moment that you that you decided to start Paris Films? Was it like a was it like a defining moment that you're like because well, you had been it was, thinking a, it was about after it that it then, was after yeah. the film incident. I mean, after they took away the film incident. Oh, okay. that's when after I was like, that. hey, okay. I got to start Paris Films. I got to just start a new brand and then just start literally just putting out my own content. Yeah, you know, as, as an actor, and then you know, I was forced to be a producer. Like I tell people, you know, act the first, but forced to be a producer because I couldn't wait for the opportunity anymore. Yeah, and 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 the world is like. At that time, I don't think it was completely obvious based on that that um, strategy moving forward. But now, even with all the streamers and all these other opportunities to get your projects, so many places to to sell them to. Yeah. Now it's a no brainer, and and you yeah. know, I learned that from you and started preaching that to others about how to navigate the world better. But yeah, um, but you were it was maybe the first person that I heard talk about that strategy to be a producer first and yeah because they're just not going to give us listen we can go and audition for all of the projects that was done that we've done worked on they wouldn't give us that opportunity yeah they just wouldn't it's just how it is you got they want the name or they just don't feel that you can do it based on your audition because i still feel like some auditions like even doing it in person sometimes it's tough yeah. because you get the, you know, you get the, it's for like, it could be just two minutes and just something may not go right at that moment. Just well, it's a whole different environment. It's it is. not your actual natural environment as an actor. To, I mean, it listen, is. being on set is different too, but it's more, in my opinion, it's more comfortable than. Yeah, if you than, do a tape, I think yeah. you can get your best performance out. Why yeah. wouldn't you want me to get my best performance out? Yeah. Versus coming in the room and then it doesn't you know well, there's all this pressure that like if i get this job my whole life can change yeah. it's like and, and now and, but then you have to retrain yourself to yeah. not think that way even tape is sometimes hard for people too they do it a million times a million no, it times is. yeah i agree with that but i think mm -hmm. a tape you can really see the person you know what they can do how they look on camera yeah i mean it's just a better thing yeah. you know but people just you know, I don't know. But like I said, I was like, I got to start, you know, own opportunity, make it happen. Because nobody's going to give you, you know, they're just not going to give you that opportunity like that. Yeah. Some people, it's like a luck in the draw thing. <laughs> yeah. But for the most part, you got to go out there and do it. Make it happen. Don't wait for anyone. I tell people, that's just, it's just with anything though in life, man. Just don't fuck around, man. Don't wait. Like, the, the, I try to say it in this way <laughs> where it's like everybody got a taste for something different. It's just like if you're working on something, you're building it. Because we would get mad, though. We send out something, they don't reach back out to us. Yeah. Then we're just, we, we all freak out. Just on a little thing. Oh, this person is. But they don't have to be as crazy as about it as you are. Yeah. That's just how it is. That's just the game. And then we kind of all get in our emotion sometimes about that and I just say listen if you want if you want it that bad you have to get it it's just like if you have a taste for if you got a taste for pizza but I don't have a taste for pizza you can't make me have that taste for that pizza I'm serious I got a taste for Chinese food so I want that but you're telling me like yo man like I want pizza I want to go get this and that I'm not I'm not gonna be as excited yeah. <laughs> because I want that Chinese food but people just don't get that like that's a real thing so it's like you want that pizza you got to go get that damn pizza yeah and just go get it and eat that like I don't care yeah go get it from go get it for somebody that's making pizza go buy the dough yourself get the cheese <laughs> you know exactly get a, like, however you got to get it or make it happen exactly and you just know? from that little thing like that's just it's so little just that analogy of I like it. I like the pizza thing but it's so real if yeah. your taste buds are like I want this mm -hmm. right now 
And listen, when you make your first pizza, it might not be the best pizza. Right. But if you keep on making pizza, it's going to get better over time to a place where you can finally start selling it to exactly, other people. Exactly, man. I just try to tell people that. Like, just, you know, you got to want it. You got to just want it. But do it. Just don't. Yeah, what does E.T. say? So you got to want it more than you want to breathe or something like yeah, that? Yeah, and that's the one of the best things ever. Yeah. You got to want it more than you breathe. Because when you're like, when you was in that water, and then you talked about like, put him under and then he's just like <gasps> wants that life and then he's like see that's how you have to yeah. want it bad enough yeah because when you can't breathe you kind of like <gasps> that's all you want yeah you don't care about what's on tv you don't care <laughs> about what am i gonna wear today you don't care about none of that closing no deal you just trying to breathe you know and that's how it was like when i got diagnosed man it was crazy because it was like everything you know just shit i just wanted to damn First off, I wanted to make sure I, I was going to wake up another day. That was, like, number one. Like, mm-hmm. I was just freaking out. Like, everything is failing. Am I going to wake up? And then it was like, I, I got to learn how to walk again. That was like, okay, that's that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> everything else was kind of like, you know, just pushed to the side. Yeah, because even, you know, which spe- speaks a lot to your character is, like, um, even when um, – you know, as you were having some symptoms and stuff like that, that might've like been crippling to other people that would have maybe like thrown in the towel sooner or something like that. You were still pushing through no matter what, even like leading up to the diagnosis, tell them what the diagnosis is and that kind of stuff too. Yeah, it's multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer. And it, you know, it attacks your, your, your bones. Like, (laughs) you know, it's, when I was diagnosed, it was like at a higher stage. Yeah. You know, it was like, you know, it was like almost at like stage three. Mm-hmm. Everything was failing. Kidneys, liver, um, just paralyzed, couldn't walk. Needed a blood transfusion immediately. And um, and I only did that. And it, and it really attacked me more because of I went in too late. You know, if I would have caught it a little earlier, it wouldn't have been as effective as much as it is now, like on my spine. Because mm-hmm. my spine's like this. Yeah. You know? And if I would have caught it early, I would have still had multiple myeloma, mm-hmm. but I would have probably still been able to run, walk, you know, run and still do like sports, like, you know, all of that. But I went in too late. Yeah. That's why I tell people you got to get checked out. Don't play games. I haven't gone to the hospital before that for like maybe 15 years. Wow. Never went in because I was like, I'm good. I'm young. Yeah. I'm working out. I'm eating good. I'm straight. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not going in, but whew, that thing hit me hard. Yeah, and some people, like I said, you know, you got to have the to really get through because, like I said, there's not a lot of people that make that made it, you know, from it, especially you know back in the day. Now they got so much medication and stuff like that. Now that it's you know that you can live with it. Um, which is a blessing, but it's, it, it's, it could be painful at times, you know, but, um, you know, that positive energy is just, you have to have it. Mm-hmm. If you don't, it's tough. Cause I seen people in the hospital when I was there cause I was like there for like a month and just seeing people that didn't have that support. And you can tell that they were like, they, they don't care. They about to, they're going to check out. They're going to check out. Yeah. And even so for you, like being super positive and having that, that already part of like your DNA and then this happening and, you know, people coming around you and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, based on like the pain levels and stuff like that, what do you do when it does, when maybe your natural instincts to be positive and it's so painful and that kind of stuff? What are some of the things that you do that kind of, that, that, that That makes it more positive, Yeah, like positive energy? I mean, music, number one, could get you going because you could feel like listen there's times where i'm like man still i'm i'm in that like oh, is this really happening now is this really happening to me like this is crazy and i could be in the car and i could just space off and start thinking about that like wow this is crazy could it just attack me even more could it just like just be get get worse mm-hmm. and you don't know so I, i'm always thinking about that because here's the thing where i try to tell people like we all know we're checking out of here. You don't know how you're going to get out of here, though. 
Like it's, it could be something. But when you know you have something that could take you out, like any like tomorrow could get a phone call. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can go for another exam and they could say, Yeah, it's here now, it's here now. That gives you a whole different like like okay. Like animal game. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like I said, like just knowing like that you have something that could take you out at any moment though. Any moment. That's what's real. People don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> And, that, and that's what's, you know, so interesting to me because you were already like that mm-hmm. maybe more than other people were and already speaking about, you know, living every day to its fullest. And then now after this has happened, even more so, which has just made you like a, just a different animal oh, when it straight comes up. to it. There, yeah. there's no excuses. Like I can't hear certain things. Mm-hmm. How, do, yeah, how does it mean when you when, when people say these like these things that like oh my boyfriend this or whatever Listen, like I is can't it like what hear, how does that make I you can't feel? hear stuff like that and it's it's not being a jerk. See, here's the thing: everybody is going through something, so their stuff that you think is small, that's small, you know, to you, but it's big to them. Mm-hmm. You know, so even if somebody is like their boyfriend this or um, my friend doesn't call me back or. My shoe, my um, my shoe got all you know. Um, they're dirty because this person stepped on it, and I want to go shoot it. Like little stuff. People go through crazy stuff, and I don't like it's little stuff. But then I'm in my mode of like, yo, get out of here! Like you're crazy! Like come on, man! Like you you really crying over that? Like seriously? You know, like that's when I'm just like, I can't hear it though. But that's their, emo- you know, and it's hard. I, I try to do it, but then there's moments where I'm like, nah, I can't hear none of that. Yeah. There's those moments where it's just silly talk. Yeah. That's why I think like in, in conversations like this are important because somebody might not have somebody close to them that could help put it in perspective, into perspective for them. Once people, as people hear your story and, and hear how like you almost didn't make it through, it was like, yeah. you know, you know, your, your will to live and, and things happening at the right time, people showing up for you and all this oh, stuff yeah. to get on the other, to, 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 to make it through that. And now to be able to talk about your story, you're doing a documentary yep. called strong um, about your whole experience on that. Cause that was that was one of the craziest things was you were out here as things were getting worse. And at first it's like, you know, come on, old man, I know your back hurts or whatever. Cause you right. had like, even, even before then, like you had hit your like rib on something, right? Like mm-hmm. at, a, at a wedding. And then it kind of like yeah. shattered it, but you were like, kind of like, wait, what the fuck? Like, what yeah. is that? And then playing basketball, getting you were still elbowed. playing basketball on that? Yeah. Doing all that ridiculous yeah. stuff. Like just not really taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. Like I should have been. As far as just, like I said, getting checked out. Because we just think we're invincible men. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and then especially, you know, men in the African-American community, we don't like to get checked out because we're scared. Yeah. We're scared to really, you know, the, not having the insurance, not having the support programs and stuff like that to go to. It's crazy. Yeah. And it just needs to. Somebody needs to walk around. And, you know, that might be me with being one of the sponsorship, you know, mm-hmm. sponsors for... <laughs> Um, spokesperson, I mean, for multiple myeloma. Yeah, going to these inner cities, talking to some of these people, these kids, just bringing a pamphlet. Hey, you know what multiple myeloma is? I didn't know nothing about it. Right, but it at- it, it predominantly attacks African American men and women. Mm-hmm. So it's like go get checked out. Stop playing games. Yeah, yeah. There was, a, I mean, there was a long period of time where I didn't have insurance and I didn't get checked out. And then I finally found a doctor that I liked, and and the reason I liked her so much was because. She would actually, like, I remember going in there, you know, once I I went in and got a physical, like, finally got insurance, like, okay, you know, you can afford insurance now. And then I went in and got a physical and everything levels were pretty good across the board or whatever. And then, um, you know, based on the the life of an entrepreneur, you know how it is, like, we just, we work ourselves until we're not feeling good or whatever, but just pushing through and not sleeping, eating horrible foods, uh, and then also drinking too much coffee just to stay through. How much can you grind and grind yourself into the ground? Yeah. And then I went to her and then instead of her saying like, you know, take this medication or do this, she was like, are you sleeping? And I was mm. like, yeah, you know, I'm like, I don't sleep well. Like, well, what are you doing? How much coffee are you drinking? And then me understanding my behavior that needed to be switched. Then I, then I was able to trust her based on, based on that. So then from that point, I felt good about if something, anything that would be wrong, I'd be like, let me go get this ch- checked out just in case because the older we live the more the more stories we hear like like yours or other people's right. and you know then you start 
that's where it becomes even more necessary because it's like it w- as you hear these bad things and this is like just a weird thing within like the design of life is like when you hear things that happen to people close to you especially you're like okay let me let me take this seriously f- instead of just bypassing it and being like now nah, i'm gonna be good so finally find a way where i could do that and and you actually did go to the to the hospital seven oh, yeah, like yeah, in yeah, july yeah. right in july yeah yeah so of, um, having pneumonia mm-hmm. didn't know looking terrible Remember, it was your mom. It was like, you got to, you got to, he's got to go in there. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. And uh, went in, pneumonia. Who gets pneumonia in summertime? Come yeah. On, man. And that Ridiculous. was one of the first early first signs. signs of this. Yep. yep. So that was crazy. And then after that, you know, I was good because I was still playing basketball at that time. I was, yeah. you know, right, right. I remember I was down for like two days. I went right back. All the guys were like, what's going on, man? You, you, you all right? And I was like, man, I had pneumonia. And they're like, what, what? In that July? What's going on? Nothing. We good. Let's play. Let's get it. You know, like that. Like, that's how it was. Yeah. Like, just, you know, as being as, uh, you know, as positive as I could. Not knowing what was going on at that time. Right, right. But, like, right. I was always like, man, we good. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. that's kind of i mean that's been like your life anyways yeah, like yeah, no matter yeah. what can't play. i just i'm telling Come you on, man, that's it. something that i can't i don't care where i live though like of course like you know because when you go out and it's snowing all day dry, i still like yo man let's let's make a good day out of it though yeah you know just it's funny because one one of the guys at the gym was always like grumpy Oh, get fuck, this fucking place. Oh, it's snowing and this and this and that. Oh, that's why my attitude is fucking sucks, this and this and that. But it's funny, though, because, mm-hmm. you know, um, the way he was. and uh, But he was just normally like that. I think even in sunny weather, he'll still be doing the same thing. But, you know, because people will use that to, like, it's true. I mean, it does. It gives a little, you know, I think there's more people, um, more excited and happier people on the west coast and like down you know like florida yeah, or whatever that was like, yeah, yeah. seasonal get, depression is yeah, like a real thing seasonal depression is a real thing it's yeah. a real thing you know you you go out you see that damn snow it's like you kind of like this even but, now if it's like or it's cold in the morning i'm like oh. or if it's like raining i'm like i gotta walk to the gym like <laughs> no no <laughs> like for I'm, sure I'm but even if it's like that even if it's raining and it's still down i'm still excited though yeah i'm just excited though and like i said i was like that before but now it's even more excitement yeah of like i said just waking up making the best out of it making the best and that, I, I think i think that's what um jai and i were talking about this the other day um is like making the best out of situations the people around me i feel like they gotta be making the best out of whatever situation it is and not yeah. complaining about yeah like, you can't this, complain this you gotta change up you gotta change something up like when the, the when the the power went out, I didn't have power, so we went and slept, and we slept on a, on on um, the couch at Jai's place because the last time it rained and her power went out or whatever, or it just rained at her place, just ruined her whole bed, so she hasn't got a new bed yet. And I was and we slept on the couch and figured it out, and my back was hurt, and we we're figuring you know different things out. I'm, I wasn't sleeping well, and she wasn't sleeping well, trying to changing um, how we were sleeping and stuff. Um, but the next morning, it was like it was nothing. It was, it was like, yeah, we made the best out of a situation. Like why, why even, why complain about something like that? Um, because some people don't even have a house to sleep in. Exactly. So Cause when you start, when you get to that and we don't understand that, like, man, you watch that 12 years of slave. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. The fact that <laughs> not being born in that time, like that's like crazy. Yeah. Like if I was in that time, probably wouldn't be here still like you know what i mean like of course it was back then but if you were born in that time you could have been checked out just going to the store just doing that like there's that scene that is like he had to go to the store for you know his master who he was living with just going to that store he had to have that uh you know that little locket that you know that's his master or whatever though like he's going to run errand my man went he went through those woods looked over well, they saw they wind up seeing them talking about come here and he was about they was about to just hang those two kids like literally they was and then he was just like where you going oh to the store for so and so what happens they're like okay go on boy get out of here as soon as he started walking they just 
pulled those two boys up to just hang them real quick. Yeah. He could have been out of here just like that too. Just like those two kids where they were gone. Yeah. But the fact that you could have been brought up in that time. Yeah. But then you brought up in this time and you complaining? That's crazy. Yeah. That's what's crazy to me. I can't like just the fact that I was not born in, you know, 1802. Yeah. <laughs> but I was born in, you know, you know, 1979. It's crazy. It's a blessing. If you start thinking like that, then you'll yeah. be more appreciative. And and having people around you, like how like Jai and I were like, well, we can get through something like like this, or like any, or even like yes. you know, like having family around you and people around you yeah. and friends around you coming through the stuff Listen, you've been through. It's like yeah. if we can if we can make it without anything, yeah, it makes the upside of having the the, yeah. the big things it's down the our, road. Anyways, right? It's our nature to complain about little yeah. stuff. It's just the times we were brought up, and it's. You know, the iPad not working, your phone, you're like, ah, my phone, like, come on, man, like, this is ridiculous. It's just our nature. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not bad to just. Yeah, it's natural not reaction. It's natural. Human reaction. But when we think about it, oh, I'll just tell people, like, you know, just take a step back and just think about there's people that don't have a phone, there's people that didn't eat today. You know, it's just tough. It's tough to do that because yeah, yeah, yeah. we're in our groove. Yeah, yeah, you, you want your fucking phone to work. Like, my, why is my phone not working? Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. ridiculous. Like, you know what I mean? But, but be, be, you know, that's to be normal. able to, that's yeah, to, to understand it, to stop and like self regulate and be yeah. like, you know, but to have that in the back of your mind and be like, okay, you know, just be being self aware. Just when you do, because yeah, it's natural reaction, but if you can self regulate and get, and get through Bro. it and use those. That's, That's what thought. I just said. Like the fact that I could just walk outside and go to the store is crazy to me. And back in the day, walking to the store, you might get lynched, and you might like for real, like real talk. Yeah. Like just think about that. Like it's just crazy. Like the freedom of that. Like people just don't understand, man. <laughs> like wow, I was brought. I was I was born in this time. Man, if they let that just soak in, they might think a little bit different. Yeah, but it's tough. They not, you know, just everybody's not wired that way. Yeah, but perspective is everything, man. It is. You get that in you, woo. And I'm kind of glad maybe everybody's not like that because it would be a tough, tough game because yeah. <laughs> everybody is on that, yeah. on that. Like, okay, they see, you yeah. know. But you see that so so much. I, rem- I remember, and even I thought probably thought this way too when I started acting. It was like, okay, you get an agent, and then they get you the job, and then you just you yeah. like all that like, scratch for me. Nah. I don't play none it's of that. It's like anymore. it doesn't matter. It's like who can I meet? Who can I? Who I, I want a team alongside me, not just exactly. in front of me. You me. can't call them up saying this. Like I said, I, I feel like as a producer, I'd be an agent's dream, but I got you know same amount of contacts as the agent. Yeah, but they got more too. They got stuff. And it's good to have an agent to help negotiate some of the stuff yeah. and come on board with that. But I'm not calling you every single day. No, I just need you. Let me know where the party's at. Yeah. Put my name on the list at the parties, and that's all I need you for. I'll make it happen. I don't need the agent, the manager, and, you know, because some of them, man, they, you know, they're not going to really work for you like, like that. Not, they got their favorites. They're going to do what they do. Yeah, the people that are booking and the, booking. prioritize those or right. whatever. They they they're just one sided. They don't really understand the game, you know. On that note, yeah, and you just it's crazy. Yeah. So so with all all of this said and like uh, moving forward with things with Paris Films and you have a new distribution company and all of this, like what are you most excited about? Man, moving forward, I'm excited. Like you know, to for this new situation with content with the with the streaming, um. Really, you know, building a hub around, you know, um, I was gonna say like a mini, ho- like <laughs> I was gonna say like a mini Hollywood. Just controlling more of the situation, yeah, is exciting. I'm really excited about just controlling more of the situation, and not really, you know, um, it's getting the approval from everybody else, which is the tough game. You know, we all want that though. You know, at the we want our stuff to reach, you know, in the bigger stages, but to be able to control um, the landscape now with streaming being so open and for independence, I'm really excited about that. Like really, really excited to produce some new content and, you know, get it out there, tell some different stories. You know, that's the biggest thing I'm, I'm excited about. Absolutely, man. And yeah. drove all the way Listen, from Detroit. All the way here, no <laughs> excuses nothing tired i had to get to a meeting listen i don't like to fly right but 
And I tell people, like, you know, if you don't like to do something or whatever, though, but you have to make something happen, you just got to make it happen. You can't say, I can't go over here because I don't like to do this or I don't like to do that. Then, you know, what the hell are you doing? Like, you're making an excuse. Like, I'm not going to make an excuse. I know I had to get to my meeting. I don't like to fly, so I had to do what I had to do. Yeah. You know? It wasn't easy. Yeah, but it, right. it made me just be an animal when I yeah. got out here because I know what's up. You yeah. you go through a little bit of something, it's going to, you know, and just to drive. I think the drive is beautiful. I love doing it, though, by myself, too. I get to, you know, I think about so much stuff. I'm looking at, you know, um, you know, driving cross country. I'm on calls. I'm on meetings. I'm doing that. get time to reflect. So, when I do get to where I have to go, I'm like fully charged up and ready. Yeah, yeah it's like therapeutic you know? in a way. Too, it's therapeutic, 100%. Yeah. It gives me a whole, man, it just, it's just a whole vibe, man. Yeah. You know, instead of just getting there, like, which, of course, man, there's times where you just have to get there, though. Like, yeah. you just have, like, man, you know, if I get that phone call, hey, we need you here, boom, we're taking care of this, we're going to, you know, we got to make this deal happen, it's for $15 million, whatever, whatever. Tomorrow, okay, yeah, I'm there. Let's go. Yeah. But there's times where it's just like, you know, for the most part, just like, with, well, like Sundance. You know, they took care of us. They flights and, <laughs> you know, gave us a car, did the Airbnb for us. And, you know, I didn't want to fly, but I flew then, you yeah. know. But if it's, you know, if it's a situation that is not as pressing, um, you know, I'll do it. I'm going to drive. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's really impressive seeing like your your life as you you have that. I heard somebody say this recently. It's like taking a backpack and throwing it over the fence. If you if you take whatever you have, put it in a backpack and you throw it over the fence, and you have no choice but to go and figure out how to get yeah, to get the other there. side. Yeah, it's like that. You already live. You, you've lived your life like that the uh, yeah, the whole time. And I'm not. And then now it's even more so. And it's super impressive to see you navigate the world and make things happen. No thanks, man. I just feel like gotta do that man it's just do it your way but make it happen don't make an excuse yeah you know like oh you got a meeting over there and then it's just like yeah but but this but i, I can't because i want to do it well do it then just make it happen i don't care yeah. how you do it i don't care how you do it but just make it happen i mean you know having kids i got to tell them that too it's just like oh I don't, go clean your room or uh, i need uh I can't. I need Levi to help me do it. No, you can do it. Cut it out. You know, well, go get your brother and then go clean your room then. Like, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> I'm trying to just give them certain things because it's always an excuse or something. Everybody yeah. has that, though. Yeah. You know, I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Amazing, man. Well, uh, thanks for, for uh, giving us all this knowledge today. Tell everybody where they can find you. And uh, and again, yeah, when what's what's next with Strong? Are you guys, you, getting, you guys are filming some more stuff right now? We're basically done. Um, we may do some slide in some little interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some Zoom ones too. We might do a new one with you too with the Zoom. Yeah. We're doing that. Um, giving a nice vibe. And we could even just record it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. You. Yeah, you yeah, probably could even use too. a lot of this for. <laughs> That no, but too. that'd be great. We'll talk about That's that. That's easy, yeah. I might have you do that on the on the mic too. Yeah. That'd be dope. But but yeah, you know, and, and I just listen, people get checked out. Don't play games. Don't let your bad planning become somebody else's emergency. It's just key. That's, That's real. It's one thing though. That was the boy TK Kirkland. He was talking about that. That was just like, woo. Because people got bad planning and and then when they hit you up. It's become that person's emergency. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, that's your bad planet. Yeah. Now it's my emergency. Don't let that happen. You know? But you can find me um, on IG, uh, Paris underscore the movie. Facebook, just Paris uh, Jones. And then Paris Films. You know, it's just Paris hyphen films dot com. Amazing. Thank you for having me of on course, man. the Rodriguez Project. Listen, Boom. I've been, man, it's just crazy the growth of, first of all, Mastermind Media from, like like I said, from 2015, <laughs> crazy. See <laughs> yeah, the and whiteboard then, with JJ. That was the same trip. Yeah, that was crazy. Same wow, trip, yeah. yeah, when I was going crazy. And then you talking about this Rodriguez Project for a while. Yeah, yeah. And really making it come to life is just, 
It's amazing. Thanks, man. It's dope, bro. Seriously, like that's like it's like people don't understand like that grind of like I said, two thousand and like fifteen to now. But people would just see this like, oh, you just did this now. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the grind. Like I mean, the last time I think I drove with you, uh, it might have been like me, you, Dre, and Andre. We're all driving mm-hmm. here. I think that might have been the last time I drove here with you was a few years into it. But I remember, yeah, getting like a. A, uh, like a bigger client on the way back on my phone right. like oh yeah, yeah. sold something <laughs> well, people don't see that like yeah. 2013 we started past films like it's 10 years now and they, they don't understand the growth of like what we had to do man and that's where I just try to tell people it's not easy yes sir but thank you no. uh, well that's the Rodriguez project for today uh, you can find us at Mastermind Media everywhere and Mark Rodriguez TV we'll see you all next time peace peace peace